This is part six of our series, Managing Human Factors and Quality Management Systems. Welcome back. So what do we make of all this? Now that we have a system to understand some of the human factors, we now have a way to do what the 2015 standard says, which is in 714 that the organization shall maintain the environment necessary to achieve product conformity, including human and physical factors. And in 851Q, which states that control conditions shall include actions to prevent human error. Is the result of all this much different than it would have been if you hadn't considered the human factors? Well, I think it is emotionally. In this case, the organization asks one last important level of question, which is, is there something about the organization's culture that allowed this to go on? Is there some lack of clarity about the organizational policy that allowed somebody to operate in that way and not say something? In this case, to the organization's credit, there wasn't. But in some cases, and at some point, there might be, and we can think of examples in family-run businesses, for example, where this might be the case, and the openly stated policy and the reality might not be the same. Also in this case, because we asked the question of whether or not the supervisor condoned the condition or not, it allows us to address the culture of complacency that I see all the time in some of these operations and on the part of the frontline supervision. What's the role of the ISO standard in all this? Well, the third-party registration, the ISO auditor, is one way that there can be integrity introduced into the system. He or she will investigate corrective action responses to the internal and third-party audit findings, start to ask questions about management commitment, as is defined in the organization's quali quality policy and procedures, and there may be an issuance of an additional finding about management commitment in cases where it's warranted and the management doesn't act. So I'm ready to say that consideration of human factors and going through a process of understanding human error has an opportunity to help make a substantial change in the culture of the organization. And that's how you get real improvement. The best run organizations walk in their truth, and if there's an opportunity for improvement, they're committed to take it. That brings us to the end of our video series. Hopefully our company will live happily ever after, and we've all learned a little bit about human factors in quality management systems. For comments, suggestions, or other improvements on this topic, please feel free to contact me at www.iso-help.com. By all means, feel free to share or subscribe to this channel. And as always, thanks for clicking.